Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Uh, come visit us here at The BioDude Houston with Padfoot and Lulu, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And today, I have an 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra that I'm gonna build for some milky tree frogs. I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up uh, if you decide to get a bioactive kit for me, uh, as well as, you know, go over some of the other things that, um, that this species is gonna need. So first I'm going to go over lighting. Uh, this, what we're using right now is my 16 inch glow and grow LED. Uh, of course, you know, it, it has, it has a really good LED lumen Kelvin rating. It's on my LED props here, uh, on an E 26 base going down plug. Uh, we leave this on for about 12 hours and then at nighttime, we're going to turn it off. As you can see the difference, it does have red and blue diodes in it, which can help bring out the color of your plants, um, as well as help create a nice necessary, uh, uh, not a color, but a good sunlight mimicry light for your terrarium. You can also use my T5HO plant light, 6,500 Kelvin. This is a T5 uh, uh, plant light. So first, let me get started with these guys. I absolutely love the milkies. They are rather large tree frogs from the Amazon. Um, you know, they really frequent the boggy, wet areas, and they get rather large. Uh, they can get pretty big. One thing that's really notable about this species is they are messy. Uh, they do create a lot of waste, and you can keep them a multitude of different ways. The first way is they can be kept on a full 100% water base, like my red-eyed tree frogs in my office. But for that, you want to make sure they're adults and you have all your anchor, anchor points set up. But B is your normal drainage layer, ABG slash BioDude, whatever, uh, substrate, DIY, however you want to do it, followed by your biodegradable springtails isopods. And that's the method I'm going to show you guys today. So the very first thing I'm going to start with is my hydro grow, which I have loose right here, as you can see. Uh, this is 100% uh, clean uh, clay, and I'm going to... Go ahead and dump. Let me see how much I get here. Now, since these guys require relatively higher humidity, um, I'm gonna go with a slightly denser drainage layer. I'm gonna go with probably about a two and a half inch drainage layer. And I have about two inches right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump the rest of this in here. Perfect. So one thing I love about you know, this type of drainage layer is the fact that it creates an even top surface. So the, the vivarium screen isn't 100% necessary in my opinion. You know, you can still access your drainage layer just as easily as you can as if you were using something else. But if you were using something like Lika or, you know, or rocks or l large glass stone, whatever, that creates an uneven top, that's when you're gonna want this because that's how the soil can get mixed in with the dirt. And then, or sorry, the soil can get mixed in with the drainage layer and then you're gonna have a bad time. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put the screen right on top here. As you can see, fits in nice. This is one of my, you know, my vivarium screens that we cut the size. Next for substrate, I'm going to be using my terraflora, which you can see my nice hardy mix right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to go and I'm going to add a good amount of water into this. Okay. And since I, this is a good amount of substrate, I am actually going to put my hand in and try to get a good amount of it mixed up. I might need this whole thing here. It looks like it. Awesome. So a good consistency for the hydro grow is wet but not dripping or excessively dripping. So right like here, as you can see how it's clumping together, this is exactly how, how you're going to want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in the substrate here. All right. I'm actually going to go and I'm going to dump. All right. 
All right, so as I dump the flora, as you can see, I am creating like an even-ish layer here. Now, this is where you can, you can get creative here. You can create some areas that have a higher substrate density than others. Now, I do that when I am planning on where am I going to put the larger plants that need a more extensive root system. That's when I'm going to say, okay, bio dude, let's add in a little bit more. I just had to remove the mask for a second to get a breather. Okay. So, here we go. I like that a little, I like that. So it is a little bit more deep back here in this corner, escaping back to here, because it is going to be a little bit more of a deeper area. All right, so I'm escaping it kind of back here a little bit more. Um, so it's deeper back here for larger plants, and that's kind of the direction I'm gonna go. So now I'm gonna take my BioDude AAA Spag Moss, which is included in your kit, with your either a 36 quart bag, terra flora, or, or six quart. And I got some already taken out of the bag and wetted here in the bucket. And you can see how the, the wetness consistency is here at the bottom. This is how, this is how you're gonna want it. You're gonna wanna squeeze it. So it's barely dripping, that works. And then take it, put it right over the top. So some choose to leave it just flat on the top and not mix it into the soil. I say those people are wrong. Um, at me if you disagree. So what I like to do is mix. Nice and heartily mix it. Because what this does is it helps A, aerate the soil. Two, creates microbial hotspots for the soil for your beneficial fungi and bacteria, as well as helps with developmental stages of all your different springtails and isopods. Then we're gonna take your six quart leaf litter, which this one's already been opened. So when you get it, it's actually gonna be filled up to here. And we're gonna take it and I'm gonna dump this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the same games. I'm gonna mix. Look at this, yeah. This is good looking substrate, okay. Now this is, I'm using a good amount. So as you can see, this is gonna compact down a little bit. I might settle to put some magnolia leaves up top here for the milkies to make sure that when they're young, that they're not gonna eat these. Um, but that's pretty much the only precaution I'm really gonna take because they're gonna be fine. So next I'm gonna add in my Bioshock. So this is the, your natural 444 NPK organic fertilizer, as well as has archaea, bacteria, and my many different types and species of mycorrhizal. Sorry, mycorrhizal fungi that help form symbiotic relationships with your plant roots. So check this out. Okay, then we're gonna add bum bum the springtails. So this is a good looking culture here. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and dump in the entire thing. Perfect. So these are just my tropical springtails, I believe tropical pinks. No, these aren't pinks, these are just your uh, silver, silvers, very sorry. I have also have tropical pinks here that I do occasionally use. And then I also have powder white isopods, as you can see these guys are right in here. So other isopods you can use are like... Dwarf white or purple. I'm, I'm trying to go with a larger species and see how they do. So I'm, gonna, I'm dumping all them in here. Here they go. Away with the... Now, if you already have this whole shebang set up and you want to get your substrate jump-started a little bit, highly recommend trying my BioVive because it is made uh, with a lot of different ingredients that put all the lost essential... How do I say this? There are processes from the springtails and isopods and from the back end processes from your different relationships that you'll get with your soil and your processes from the bio shot that deplete it on the back end. So things like potassium, some things like how nitrogen is fixated directly into the plant roots, um, other things like that are, can severely be affected over time and the BioVive really helps replenish those things. So just something to think about. Uh, 
So, I like this. So we have our hydro grow drainage layer. We have our vivarium screen. Then we have our, our terra flora with AAA sphagnum moss, live oak leaf litter, springtails, and isopods. Next, let's get on the building. So what I'm gonna do is first figure out where I'm gonna put big boy. And that is this big aglonemia, and it's gonna fit. So this is an aglonemia cut list, and I have a bunch of these on my website. They sell out fast, get them while you can. And I'm gonna put this one way in the back. And you can see how I dug out the hole. Now, one thing with milky tree frogs is, A, you wanna have spots for them to be able to perch. Number two, these frogs are, get very heavy. So you need to have plants that will not only withstand their weight, but also make sure that they don't get you know, crushed or if they get open that they're not toxic. Lots of different things. Got another really nice looking, looking plant here. This is also an aglonemia. I'm gonna put this one right here. So honestly, this tube down here really isn't for them. It is, they might use it. What I see them, what I see this getting most used for is a compostable for the springtails and isopods. So next I'm going to, I got a really nice cork tube right here. So they love cork tubes, I will say that. Milkies, if you wanna breed them, they're, they're rather simple to breed, honestly. They're just, very messy and time consuming. You give them a nice water basin with a, a light filter that's not moving the water too much, but just enough to keep it clean. Put some pothos at the bottom and just stack cork tubes like this. They breed within the tubes. It's pretty cool to see. I actually haven't, I've never actually tried to breed milkies. I've worked with people, helped raise, have seen babies, um, but I actually personally never got to breed them. I will one day though. So let's see here, and I got a, I got a nice brom here. So I'm gonna try to get the brom to be, so this was actually one of my mother plants that's been growing in a pot for a really long time. I'm gonna, I have a little bit of spag moss left over. Okay. I think I'm gonna put that. Uh, I would love to put it right there, and I think I can. I'm, I'm sticking that down. So this, the, the anchor that's being used is this cork right here. And what I'm trying to do is just create a resting point for the Brom slash place for them to come out and chill. And that did it. Then I got a really nice looking mother plant right down here. Or do I go with your typical pothos here in the front with another cork tube going like that? It looks like it's gonna be the cork tube. And it looks like it's gonna be the... So, really important with this species, broadleaf plants, like I said. Plants that can handle the BioDude crush rating, which I showed you in other videos. You want plants that are obviously, don't secrete any toxic goos or anything like that, because in the wild, the milkies partially get their name from the little white goo that they secrete on their backs. Um, it's very, very, very uncommon that, that, that you'll see that in captivity, but you know, still pretty cool. A neat, ad neat adaptation. All right, so we got, I can dig with that. I got some live moss right here. And you know, I'm not keeping this terrarium, guys. I'm raffling this tank off, which is pretty exciting. I'm gonna be offering it off here at the BioDude point of sale. We do have captive bred milky tree frogs here available right now at the point of sale, which I will show you in a little bit. But 
really, I'm just excited to get people into this species because it's such a cool, such a cool animal. Uh, really, really worth keeping. So I do have a bowl here. So for this species, you want to make sure that you're giving them clean water every day, uh, making sure crickets aren't drowning in it or cleanup crew are not drowning in it. So to combat that, I always put a small piece of cork bark in the actual water dish. And I'm going to put the water bowl right here. Perfect. And get that out real easily. These guys like low grade temps, 70, uh, 73, 78 degrees. Keep them at room temperature. They don't need a hot spot. I personally have never provided UVB to this species. That doesn't mean they might not benefit it, but I benefit from it. But I personally, with how they're towards the tail end, bottom uh, on the forest floor, so I don't really expect them to get uh, a lot of UVB. So it's really important that when you're using supplements and things like that, they're using Rapashi Calcium Plus or something with D3 in it. That's very important for this. So that way they can get proper bone development. Now I expect these guys to hang out in here. Uh, you know, they like to rest themselves within the thicker leaves. And I'll actually show you over here in their current enclosure where we have some critters for sale. And they love the aglonemia. Oh, let's check them out right here. Yeah, look at them go. Look how fat this one is. They're, I'm telling you guys, they are a truly amazing species. Truly amazing. So next, let me get this shut. Cool. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick overview. We have our hydrogrow drangelae right here with a screen divider with our terraflora bioactive substrate, springtails, isopods, bioshot. I will be adding in biovive and things um, as it grows. I have a neoregalia uh, bromeliad up here that is going to hold a lot of water, which they might also soak in. And I have a lot of different areas for them to be able to come in out and, ba and not necessarily bask, but be exposed if they choose to do so, as well as tubes that are going to be able to fit adults. So especially with this one having two different entrances at the top and through here, as well as here and here. One thing to keep in mind when keeping these guys is if you look at the space in between their eyes. So we can see underneath. So if you look at the space in between their eyes, that's a good way to tell what size cricket that they need. Like a lot of tree frogs, they can be prone to esophageal tears when they're babies. So it's really important to make sure that you don't feed crickets bigger than the space in between their eyes. And to win this cage, all you have to do is come to the BioDude Houston, make a purchase, that gets you an entry. If you leave us a review on Google, that gets you an entry. Oh, there's a bunch of other ways. We'll be posting the stuff on uh, Facebook soon. I really appreciate everybody's support. Be sure to come and visit my store Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2. Visit my website, BioDude.com, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Stay safe, everybody. Do divides.